Hey, everybody. Hi. We're here. Yay. Somebody just rang my doorbell outside. <laughs> I heard my little ring go, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Boy, that's perfect timing, isn't it? It's all right here. Well, hey, hi. I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread. And I am going to be doing the Kimber Bell April mini quilt today. And today I'm going to use, this is Darla, my luminaire. There she is, her friend Spanky, my 10 needles on the other side of the room. We'll use him tomorrow. But um, hi, Betsy. Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you guys here. We've got a small but exclusive bunch with us this morning. And that is just fine. Or this afternoon. It's after 12 now for me. So lots of fun stuff going on here today. Oh my goodness, you guys, I've been so busy. Tune in tomorrow morning to the Situation Room at 7 a.m. Central. I've got an announcement to make. It's going to be very fun. All right. <clears throat> so the technique I was going to talk about today is, hi, Dave, glad you're here. Uh, you were in Illinois. Oh, okay. I thought you might have been flying around. Yeah. So today I'm going to show you guys reverse applique. And reverse applique is where you've got like a whole and fabric on the back, and then there's fabric on the front, and you can see the fabric on the back through the hole. That's reverse applique, pretty much. So, oh good, we're up to 96. We're rocking and rolling here now. I'm going to just talk a little bit about the products that I'm using and, and whatnot, so we can allow people time to get here, so we don't start without them. All righty. So, because this is a Kimber Bell project, I'm going to use Kimber Bell products. Okay. And I've got links below the video to all of the things that I purchased. Everything I got, I got through my girlfriend's quilt shop, which is owned by Chris. Yes. Yes. I, I get them mixed up. Kim owns Kimber Bell. I got to say Kim and Kimber Bell. And then Chris is her twin sister. So that is my girlfriend's quilt shop. So I am using... The project batting, I've just got a scrap because this is a small piece. And today we're going to work on bunny two. That's the little brown bunny that uses the pleather piece that's in the embellishments. And ultra light mesh cutaway, going to use that. And again, just like this morning, I have already hooped my cutaway, but I'm using scraps from previous projects. and it's fine. What I did was a flat seam. I did a flat seam with a join stitch in the middle. Okay. So, uh, this stuff is not inexpensive. So if you can save your scraps and reuse them, absolutely. You want to do that. And this morning on the situation room, and if you're new here, hi, welcome. And I have got a morning live every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Central where it's a virtual stitching retreat. And we just kind of, anything goes and there's always, well, not always, most of the time, some kind of tutorials, Q and A's, that kind of thing. Uh, never a dull moment in the situation room. And for uh, the, you dog lovers, Frito usually makes an appearance, my little Frito. This morning in the situation room, when I was talking about how I layer up my stabilizer pieces, this is not like where you put right sides together, make a stitch and fold it over. These are just overlapped by about an inch, three quarters to an inch. Okay. And on the luminaire, the join stitch was in, um, in the sewing module, uh, number two and 208, but I just did it on my, uh, NQ 3700 D from brother. And it was 207. So you kind of have to look around. It looks a little bit like a, the, uh, what are those things called on castles that go up and down and up and down? There's a word. It'll come to me. <laughs> There's a word. If anybody knows it, put in here. Yeah, I know it's a little early for the situation room. Fortunately, at 5 a.m., yeah, for you, Shelly. Fortunately, uh, you can always catch it on replay. And I usually will try to go ahead and change the, title of it at the top because that's what YouTube searches on. That Those are totally free. Join in. We have a great time. 
All right, so I'm reusing my batting scraps, uh, stabilizer scraps, and I have printed out, because I don't want to keep looking at the, the laptop, uh, I have printed out the page. So this is the bunny block we're going to make right here, bunny two. That's the one we're doing. And it is just two pages. Now, Kimberbell does not tell you what color threads to use, but they do give you an idea of what color threads you would want to use. So whatever brand of thread you have, just choose a color that works with that one. Are you still in here? Oh, Frito's here. Yeah, she's laying down over there in charge of stuff. So I just took my blue fabric. You're going to have two pieces of blue fabric for this block. Thank you, Cindy. That's very thoughtful of you. Cindy gave me a super sticker. Uh, it's a dollar sign that is below the chat. And that allows you to show your appreciation for the content. So think of it as a cheap class, right? Thank you very much, Cindy. Okay, so we're going to use two pieces of blue fabric for this block. I do have, hold on, let me back up just a second. The only thing you absolutely have to buy, and I left the case over there, is the CD with the designs on it, okay? And I got that and I took it over to crenellation. Cren yes, encasement, something like that. Moat turrets, I don't know. <laughs> You guys are funny. Rook's Watchtower. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are paying attention. That's awesome. Drawbridge. <laughs> we'll just say dragon while you're at it. <laughs> I've got Kimberbell paper tape. Okay. We have a good time here, don't we? I've got an open roll that I'll be using. And I have got the embellishments kit that goes with it. And this is the fabric kit. Now, this month's fabric, it has a lot. Uh, this month's kit has a lot of fabric in it. I don't like picking fabrics. That is not something I am good at. And if I had to sit here and pick which blue to use, I, it just paralyzes me, you guys. I'm just not good at that. I'm really good at taking somebody else's decision and implementing it on my embroidery machine or my quilting but I'm not so good at picking out stuff myself. And goodness knows I have my share of fabric, but now I know I have the exact right fabric. Okay, according to the picture. So I know it's gonna look right. That's just how I am. Anyway, I did put fusible woven. I pieced my scraps again on the back of the background fabric. So this one is six and a half. This one is, I think, five by five. This one is your lining. The smaller one is the lining, okay? And so you don't need any uh, fusible on the back of the lining. You just need it on the back of your background fabric. If you put fusible on the back of this, it's going to be too thick to when you have to turn it to get a, uh, a nice crisp line, okay? In my opinion. So, okay. That'll look good. You're with me. I know. Well, Joyce, you don't have an embroidery machine? Well, save your pennies. It opens up a whole new world of fun. But I appreciate you watching. <laughs> it's always fun to watch it. All right. So uh, I went through and along with the thread color guide that is in the instructions, I went ahead and chose my threads. So there's my light blue, and here is my light orange. This is for flower number three. This is for the blue fabric. I needed a white and a soft pink. That soft pink is for flower number one. And I had a yellow. What happened to it? Well, maybe I forgot to grab the yellow. I'll have to run and find it. I don't know where it went. I'll have to run and find it. And Kimberbell also gives you an option of doing some background quilting. Thank you, Star. That's very thoughtful of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Don't have a scan and cut, but thinking about needing this, let me tell you, you do need it. Yes, you do. You don't need it for this project, but for what we do, we, you do need it. So I have clear blue tiles. And if you've got clear blue tiles, you can certainly use this to do your background quilting. 
Okay, that's perfectly fine to do that. And in here, I did a mark already. I would use, just me personally, You, the designs that you get in here, it's a snap band. <laughs> the designs you get in here are seasonal, okay? That's what you get. I would use the swirls or the loops. So see those right there near the middle of the book, swirls or loops. But these are the designs that you get in the clear blue tiles. So if you do not have access to background quilting designs in your embroidery machine, or you haven't, you know, you don't have any background quilting designs, you can either get them from Kimberbell directly. They are a download, and those are specific to this volume one of the mini quilts. You can get just a la carte, you can pick the ones you like that are, you know, cute, like if that it has a bunny on it or something and you want to do that. And then, or you could do it from their clear blue tiles. So you have lots of options for background quilting. I have not loaded a background quilting design in here. Uh, I will probably use the stipple inside of my embroidery machine and I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay. Hi. Well, you're welcome for the tutorial, Carrie. I'm happy to uh, bumble along here with you guys. All right. Another thing that they call for in this particular pattern is a hooping and pressing mat. Okay. So this hoop press mat, I've got a link to these below in the description box. All right. They're about a half an inch thick. You don't have to have them. If you have them, you want it for whatever hoop you're using. I'm using my six by 10 hoop. But the point of this is we're going to be doing some work on the back of the hoop. And so you will take this and set it inside like that. And that's going to give you a nice firm surface so that you don't press down and pull your project or stabilizer in any way. If you don't have a hooping and pressing pad, I recommend go get a dish towel and fold it up or get some extra. Um, batting and fold it up so it's about so thick. And that will work just fine too. But these are a lot of, to me, they're just, I know it's a six by 10. I know it's going to fit. I don't have to fiddle with it. But I embroider so much that it was worth it to me for this. When we pull the hoop and do work outside of the machine, you need a firm, flat surface to work on. This is for what I call lap work. This is a quilter's cut and press. You can use um, either size. This is the big one. They make a small one, but either this. And so when I pull the hoop, I'll be doing it on my lap, just like this. Okay. You need to do it on your lap on a surface like this, on a table, uh, at your desk or something, but put it on so that as you do whatever it is you need to do, you're not going to, because if your stabilizer moves at all, regardless of the hoop that you have, um, then you're going to lose the registration on the design and you'll have to start all over. That's akin to unhooping. Okay. Whoops. So I will take my hooping press pad and put it right there. And now I know I'm not going to mess with the registration at all. Let me smooth this out and get that nice and taut. All right. Yeah, those pressing mats are great, aren't they? All right. So let's get busy with this. Now, one of the things that I love about Kimberbell projects is that they have the best instructions in the industry. If you are brand spanking new to machine embroidery, this video is geared toward you specifically and uh, feel like you got a question, pop it in. There's no silly questions. Uh, there are some experienced embroiderers in here who will be happy to answer your question. And if you want to get someone's attention in the chat, you need to do the at symbol and type the first couple letters of their name and it will pop up and choose their name and then type it in. That is not private. It is public, but it will show up on their screen in a bright orange in their name to kind of catch their attention to say, hey, somebody is responding to your question or trying to get your attention or something like that, okay? So on these instructions, you've got symbols and 
step by baby step instructions to tell you how to do exactly what it is that you're going to do. Okay. And they've got little irons to tell you when you need the iron. Matter of fact, let me turn mine on. I see an iron symbol there. Let me do this. I have got the, uh, this is the Cricut mini press. I'm going to heat this up. I have a little rolling cart back here and it has a steady Betty on it. I just put that on there on the top. I really like that ironing surface. And then you are going to need some topper. This feels like a uh, quilter's cut and press. Quilter's cut and press. This feels like glad press and seal. <laughs> it's exactly what it feels like, but it's not sticky. And it's a wash away topper. This will prevent your stitches from as they stitch down into something kind of disappearing. Okay, so this will work. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Betsy. Don't forget to click on the thumbs up. That's very much appreciated. All right. You have a TV tray next to your embroidery machine for ironing. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. All right. I do have the embellishments kit for this particular month. And of the, inside this kit, um, you are going to get a piece of bunny fuzzy in white. Okay, we got a piece of fur-ish. It's not real fur. Uh, not going to use that on this one. And then here is your pleather for our little brown buddy we are going to make today. Okay, so this is for another bunny. All right. So the instructions that I'm starting on are on page nine. That's, uh, that's bunny two. The first one they wanted you to make is the, just the stitch out of you're a good egg. And that is fairly self-explanatory, very simple to do. But I wanted to show you a more difficult uh, technique of the um, reverse applique. All right. They've got an instruction in there where they want you to trim inside of, uh, to trim some stuff. I don't recommend using curved scissors for that. Curved scissors are really easy to cut where you're not intending to cut. So I will be using my uh, Guggenheims. I've got these and I have some little snips. And then I also have a link to my curved embroidery scissors. These are Gingers. If you are getting into machine embroidery, you're going to need curved scissors. These have a curve here so that you can trim down in the hoop. And they're curved on the bottom so you don't trim your fabric. You just trim right around the edge of the stitching. Uh, you guys, don't go cheap on these. They're, they're worth every penny. Um, so they might seem a little expensive for some scissors, but gingers are the best. The, the cheap ones hurt your fingers, and you don't want to do that. I've had these for 10 plus years. So it's they are worth the investment very much. All right. I think that's it. So we've covered all of the... Supplies we need, the fabric, the threads, the stabilizer, the batting, whole nine yards, right? I don't, we're not, I'm not doing batting yet. I don't think I'm going to do the batting. Um, I don't think I'm going to do the background quilting on this. I did the background quilting on previous blocks. This one, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it or not. So I will take a look at it. We might do something cool with the luminaire too, maybe. All righty. So we are ready to go. Hooping instructions. Mark the center of the background fabric. And the background fabric is this guy right here. And to mark center, the easiest way to do it is to fold it in half and just give it a little finger crease, okay? And then uh, fold it in half the other way and give it a finger crease again. And that's going to give you a, a, a center. That's perfect. You can use uh, markers that heat away. This is a friction fusion marker. I use these all the time in my embroidery and they iron away. So if you want to mark on these, that's great. I have these in my Amazon store. And there is a link to my Amazon store below the video. So I'm just going to, do I have a little ruler over here? Let me see. Oh, I don't. I'll just use this straight edge. Straight edge is a straight edge, right? That's all that matters. Okay. Just to give me a, a good visual of where 
center is on my fabric. And that'll work. Okay, that's perfect. And then it says cut the stabilizer larger than the embroidery hoop. We've already done that. And uh, tape the fabric to the center of the stabilizer. All right. So the center of the stabilizer, if you've got a magnetic hoop like this, it's a little bit more tricky. On a standard hoop, you're going to have little marks. You're going to have north, south, east, and west marks. And what you can do is put a ruler on that and mark center of where things need to go. So I'm going to do something kind of like that. I don't have the long enough ruler with me, but uh, I'm just going to I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my little instructions and just I've got the tape marks on here. OK, and I'm going to mark. Zero center all both directions. Where's my marker? Where did that go? Y'all, I put stuff down and it disappears. It grows legs. It's fine. And this is, does not, because this is an in the hoop project, it does not have to be exact. It needs to be close, but it doesn't have to be exact. Okay. So let me look for, I'm going to see the zero and the zero, and I'm going to put them I'm looking at the line underneath here. So my stabilizer is not straight. Well, that's okay. No big deal. Okay. There we go. Mark center. Pretty simple. I need some tea. I've got my quilting is my superpower. This is from my girlfriend's quilt shop. Love this. Did I put two pieces of stabilizer together? Yes, I did, Patty, only because I used a, I used two scraps and I sewed them together down the side. All right. There we go. So I've marked center on my stabilizer. Okay. Yes, that is a nice thing about machine embroidery is that you can choose the fabrics that you want you can use fabric, you know, a lot of times I'll start with the threads that I have or try to match those up because matching threads and matching fabrics can be tough. So, all right. Have I ever tried Battleizer from Hoop Sisters? Yes, Robin, I have. I like it very much. I've got some in my, I have a bat cave, I call it. It's a little room on the side of the here. This is a, a, a remodeled two-car garage and it had a little utility room to the side and that is my bat cave where I keep all my batting. <laughs> okay. Another pot of coffee. Annie's ready for it. All right. And then the instructions say, um, let's see, go to the embroidery instructions. That's what we're fixing to do. All right. So, yep. Flower one is the little yellow one. Flower two is the pink and flower three is the orange. So starch the lining fabric and press well. I did starch the lining fabric. It's got just a little bit of body to it. This uh, was starched with faultless premium magic quilting and crafting spray. It's in a pink can. You can get it at Joann's. I really, really like that stuff. I came across that at the Houston Quilt Festival two years ago. Fell in love with it. Absolutely love that. No scent to it. So it's very nice. You don't get the, um, it's not the same as like that terial magic. You don't need that kind of stiffness. They just want you to starch. All right. And then place the lining fabric right side down. The lining fabric does not have a right side, but that's easy enough. I want to make sure that it is centered. So I'm going to fold it into quarters. Okay. And just rough fold into quarters. We're going to cut a lot of this away. And then what I'm going to do is put it in the center mark on the stabilizer. Let me show you. Okay. So I'm just going to take it and put a quarter of it in one quadrant of the mark. That looks pretty good. Yep. Fold it over straight. Okay. And then fold it over 
straight. So now I know it is center. All right. And then it says, load the embroidery file into the machine. Oh, wait a minute. I got ahead of myself. Let's see. Stitch the lining placement line and then place the lining fabric right side down. Okay. I got ahead of myself. That's how you, <laughs> that's how you could do that. I forgot the lining placement line. Pay attention, Becky. Oh, all right. I am going to change my threads on my machine. I want to show you what I showed this morning on my channel because a lot of people get hung up on this. Oh, Ellen, I'm happy to share it. Thank you for watching. Okay. No, I do not plan on doing quilting through the seasons. Okay. I want to bring you guys in and show you how I change my threads. So up here, I'm going to grab the this thread and I cut it on the side toward me and I'll let it drop over the edge of the machine, okay? And then I'm gonna put my new thread on. I need to back up so you guys can see this whole process. Okay, I'll get close up again in a second. So now I'm gonna put my new thread on and bring it through, okay. If you are brand new and you have not yet ever threaded your embroidery machine, you need to follow the instructions in your book, okay? And if you're thinking about getting an embroidery machine, I highly, highly recommend a brother. Best bang for your buck, very easy to use. All right. So I have these tails, these two tails, I have. they're about five inches long. I will twist them around twice together so they think that they're one. And then I make a, a fairly good sized loop. Can you see the size of that loop? I'm gonna get you in pretty close. Whoop, not in the hedges. There we go. Focus. Let's see, I don't want that. It's focusing on the hedges, hold on. There it is, okay. So now take the tails and put them so they're hanging behind the loop in the center and then reach through with your fingers and just grab them and pull. And that's how I do that. Very, very easy. Okay. No, you don't put the big piece down first, Arliss. It says to put the lining piece down first. Let me make sure. Yes. Number one on page nine is stitch the lining placement line. Okay. And the small piece is the lining. The big piece is the background fabric. And you can tell because here in the instructions, I'll get you in here so you can see the instructions, okay? It says the background is six and a half. Whoop, this way. There we go. Sorry about that. Background is six and a half. That's this guy. And the lining is five by five. So the lining is the smaller piece, okay? That can get confusing because we've got two different fabrics of the same color. All right. That's a, that's a good question because I sat here for a few minutes chewing on that myself going, okay, let me make sure. Now what I do to thread the machine, if I didn't pull the thread through backwards, which I did. Well, see now I just, I pulled the thread backwards. Never unthread your embroidery machine by ripping it backwards through. Well, so much for that because I pulled the thread up too, too much, which is fine. Now you guys know how I do it. Okay, so I'm going to thread my machine. My thread I'm using is either Exquisite from, Di yeah, this is Exquisite from Designs and Machine Embroidery. And, uh, or I use Isocord Poly or I use Glide. Those are my favorites. Let me, I don't want to move that. Um, let me get my bobbins out so I can show you guys what I use for bobbins. My bobbins, I used Designs and Machine Embroidery Pre-Wounds. I love this. This is the one that I use 70D slash 2. It's a class A bobbin, size 15, class 15 style A. So that's what I use 
in my embroidery machine. Love these. Okay. So it is time for the hoop. And we're going to stitch the lining placement line. We are on step number uh, one on page nine. Put um, touch embroidery. I brought the design up and I've got the green and we're ready to go. Okay. All right. Can I show the can of starch? You're not seeing it on Joanne's website. Yeah. Let me, I've got, I'm going to get my yellow thread and the starch just a second. I've got to walk around the room here and get the starch. Oh, this will work, I think. And get my, I've got some really pretty yellow thread from Glide. Um, I think that's more of a gold. Let me see here. That's pretty. Okay. Digging all around you guys. I'm pretty sure you can get this from Joann's. It is. I've heard tell it's at Joann's. This is it here. I've even seen this in the grocery store, I think. But this is it. This is from Faultless Magic. This company has been around 100 years, literally. They just put it in a pink can. And it works great. Now, they have the spray and they have the squirt. So either one works well. Either one. Yeah, this is the yellow I thought I would choose. It's nice and soft, so that will work well. Which one? Yellow number one or yellow number two? The bright or the soft? Because I'm using soft pink, right? Found it? Good. Awesome. And a soft orange. So I'm going to go with the soft. Yeah, that's what I want. Thanks for helping me. <laughs> I just had to talk through it. <laughs> Okie dokie. I needed to get up and get my yellow thread anyway. Okay, okay. So there's the placement line for the lining. See how that stitched right there? Now what I'm going to do is take my lining piece. Where did it go? Here it is. And center it. So I've still got those crosshairs and I'm going to center it exactly the way I showed you before. Fold it in half. Okay. And fold it in half again. This is so much fun, you guys. I love doing this stuff. And I'm just going to place it on here and make sure that the entire placement line is covered. I've got a big old thread tail on there I don't want. Okay. And you don't have to tape this down, I don't think. Let me see. Do they say to tape it? They do not say. Let's see here. Place the lining fabric right side down, stitch the lining seam stitch, and then carefully trim inside of the seam stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance, cutting through all layers of fabric and stabilizer. Let me make sure you might be right about, you might be right. Yes, yeah, soft, soft, soft. You might be right about that background fabric going down first. Let me see. Let me, let me make sure I didn't mess this up. Mark the center of the back, tape the fabric to the center of the stabilizer. You were right. You were absolutely right. Let me see here. So, yes, Arliss, you were correct. Thank you. You sure were. It says, tape the fabric to the center of the stabilizer. It doesn't say, yep. So, it's the same thing. Now that I'm looking at the pictures, I'm like, hmm? Yeah, I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. Sure. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love Glide Embroidery Thread. Your quilt store just got it in. It's not crazy priced either, but they've got really good um, colors. Beautiful colors. Okay. So now I'm going to take my Kimberbell tape. 
I know they're about to file chapter 11. You know, I kind of used to know that that I, I kind of knew that was coming because they just give stuff away on there. Just trying to get people in. So sad. It's hard to compete with the Amazons of the world, isn't it? So sad. All right. So now we're going to do this. Now, because I already stitched that stitch, let me show you how to fix that. I do that all the time. This is how you fix that. I'm going to put this back in. Most, if not all, home embroidery machines have this button that looks like a needle plus minus, and it allows you to jump around in your stitch order. Okay? And that's all right. And I'm going to hit the needle plus minus. And mine has up and down arrows. Yours may have a little thread spool, but I'm just going to go up. And then it's going to just stitch again. I'll tell it okay. Yep. Happens all the time. Good catch, Arliss. Thank you. If they're going out of business or it's on sale, get a case. You'll love it. Okay. Now I'm going to put this down on that crosshair I put in the center of the background fabric. Make and then fold it open, making sure that the whole placement line is covered. Put that back in, and now I'm going to stitch the tack down line. Usually, tack down lines will go around twice. Okay. If you guys have, if feel the need, you should not put your fingers in the embroidery field. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you can use, this is a purple fang, and this is nice because if it gets hit by the needle, one, it's not my finger, but two, the needle can go through it without breaking usually, but I would change my needle right after that. All right, so that's good. And now we need to cut through all of that. All right. And leave a quarter of an inch seam allowance, it says. So if you are not comfortable with a quarter inch seam allowance, let me back up. My ironing thing's in the way here. If you've got, like on the end of the purple fang, that this says one quarter on it. If you're not comfortable, what you can do is just, or use a ruler and just mark your quarter inch. And then that way, you know, you're going to get it right. So you can just mark it a little bit around, right? Is that what it said? Let me double check. Carefully trim inside of the seam stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. Yep. And you can eyeball it if you want. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Again, do your lap work on a firm surface or a desk, ironing board, something like that. Okay. Now I know where I need to trim. And to trim, if you have a rotary cutter handy, you can make a little slice right in here and that will work real well. Do I have a rotary cutter? No, I don't, but I have some straight scissors. Okay. I'm going to use some different ones, but now that I've got it started, I'm just going to go ahead and cut like quarter. Having very sharp scissors is very handy. Okay. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. 
Carefully trim inside of the seam stitch, cutting through all layers of fabric and stabilizer. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. You guys need to check out um, Sewing Machines Plus's Hoop Fest or Quilt Fest. They're doing that all week. Give you something to watch. I will be on live Friday at noon central. No, noon Pacific. Showing, um, doing some work on the King Quilter 2, my new long arm. I love it. Okay. You broke one of the... Oh, my goodness. Oh, you broke a needle on the long arm? I've done that. Oh, my goodness. All right. Now that this is cut, it says clip the curve inside of the seam stitch through every eighth of an inch. Cut line shown in red. Clip through the placement line from machine step one. I feel like I need to... I feel like I, no, I don't have to do anything. So now it, it wants me to clip this curve. Okay. The smaller you make the clips, you go to, but not through that line. Okay. The smaller you make the clips, the smoother of a fold you will get when you flip this. This is just like doing an arm's eye on a sleeve. Same idea. So if you've got sewing, garment sewing skills, this will be a no-brainer for you. You'll get a nice, smooth inside curve on that reverse applique piece if you, you don't want to go real big. You guys see why you need a firm surface to do this? Because this would be a hot mess if I was trying to do it in my lap without this. It says eighth inch. I'm not quite that dedicated. I'm getting there. <laughs> but you want it to look nice. You're going to do this on all of your uh, eggs. They're all reverse applique. Hey, Lisa, how are you, Betty Boop? She is working on a quilt, you guys, that is like 106 by 85 or something crazy like that. Ginormous quilt on her APQS long arm. She sent me pictures. Okay. So now what you want to do is you want to flip this over. Do yourself a favor and finger press this first. Make sure it knows where you want it to go. That's very handy. If you've got a clapper, it helps. Okay. And now what you're going to do is turn the hoop to the back. This is where you want your press pad. Where's my remote? Oh. Okay. And then... All right. Okay. And then fold this back nice and taut. And you want tape. And I have a Kimberbell tape dispenser in this room somewhere. And don't you know I can't find it? Okay. I'm going to take myself some tape pieces and put them out here so I don't need my hands as much. Ah, uh, so that, there's four of them. Okay, so I'm going to push, pull this back. So this is, see how smooth and taut that is? You almost want to see that seam either right in the middle of that or toward you so it's toward the back. You really don't want to see the seam on the front. Okay. 
But this is where it gets to be all technique so that you get a nice look. Okay. I just knocked all my tape off. Be careful that you don't pull it too taut. So the seam right in the middle of the circle or just a hair to the back will look nice. Nice and smooth, okay. You don't want any little puckers. And you don't get puckers when you have done your trimming. I'm gonna, it doesn't tell you to press this, but I'm going to. Okay. And let me see here. I do have a little clapper. I'm gonna press it down with the clapper. A clapper is a tailor's tool. I love mine in embroidery. The embroidery world is just getting into this. You can't find your camera belt tape dispenser either, Mrs. P. They, they grow legs. I have looked, oops. I have looked all over this room. And I love this. This is a tiny clapper, a baby clapper. It fits my hand. It is so nice. And I don't use steam. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Oh, I found it. It was hanging with the clapper. Yay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was hiding up under there. As my husband would say, it's right where you left it. All right. I don't like this piece of tape that I got to fold in. So let me pull it up. Put new... And this one, so your tape is going to move around on the base of your machine. So if you've got a shoddy tape job, then you, these are going to move. So you want to tape, um, I think you want to tape all of that down. Let's see. They've only taped the corners. Well, I think it's, I'm going to do all of them. And I really wanted the sides taped, so I got this nice, smooth fold. Matter of fact, let me check the front and be sure. Yeah, that looks really good. See that? That's beautiful. That looks just perfect. That's what you're after, okay? And you do that by making sure that that seam goes to the middle. And that got so nice and smooth because... I did a bunch of tiny clips all around in here. All right, that's good. So the fabric won't get pulled up or anything around on the underside. Okie dokie. So what's next? We've taken care of that. Carefully pull the lining through the hole, iron to the back, prepare an ironing surface smaller than your hoop, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there we go, okay. Okay, on to page 10. Place the hoop right side down with the embroidery over the prepared surface. Let me see here. Oh, I've already done that. Okay, so now it is time to take our fabric for the egg. And where did that go? Y'all, how is it that in your embroidery world, everything just grows legs? Where did my fabric go for my egg, y'all? What'd you do with it? It was right here. I'll back out. Y'all see if you can see it. <laughs> Let's look. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's here. Did it fall? No, it didn't fall. Where did it go? I had the egg fabric. And the embellishments, and I have all of this not in my tray. 
My goodness, y'all. Where'd my egg pepper go? <laughs> ah. I mean, I got plenty to make more, but goodness sakes. I'll find it as soon as I cut another piece. Where on earth? <laughs> it likes messing with me. Embroidery gremlins. Where did it go? Okay, I see the stabilizer. I see the topper. I've got everything over here. All right. Well, I'll just cut another piece. Here's another piece. It's fine. I'll use this. Okay, so on the back of the hoop, let's see. No. Oh, you are. Right. It's up near the thread. Thank you. See, you guys are awesome. There it is. Ta-da. Thank you. <laughs> Way to go, Betsy. <laughs> All right. And so now I'm going to just tape this on here like this. And it, they just have it in the corners. Okay. Okay. First applique. It's what it looks like. Yay! <laughs> Brighten your day. It happens to all of us, Annie. This is the way it goes. All right. So now that we've got that done, this says stitch the egg tack down line. We're on step number three. Yeah. Uh, let me get you in there so you can see what we're doing. So we're going to stitch the egg tack down line. Now, uh, it does not matter. I don't think it wants you to use white fabric or white thread. Okay. So I'm going to change my threads. Just the exact same way I showed you when we started. Okay. Now I get the tails even with each other. Take about five inches, twist them twice so they think they're one, make a big loop, put the tails behind the loop, reach through the loop and pull it. This looks so good. Oh my goodness. And now it's time for, oh, I can't hardly see that on my screen. This is the tack down line for the egg. Okay. And it's doing a nice triple stitch. I have a, uh, thread tail that didn't get pulled down in. So I like to take care of these before we get too, uh, too far along. I'll grab, these are Revlon eyebrow tweezers. I think they're the best in the industry for this kind of work. And then these are uh, little snips that are on a spring. So they're called spring snips. There's a place called Tooltron that you can get these. Tooltron.com. And for you Texas folks, that's right up there in uh, Bolverde. Okay, I want to show you guys a lesson learned here real quick when we get done.
when you are pulling your blue fabric to the back, I'm going to get way close in here. I want to show you guys. See how you can see a little bit, tiny bit. I want to get this right where you can see it and I can hold it still. You can see a teeny tiny bit of that seam right there from the back. Look how far away the edge of the white stitching is away from that. But as it goes further down and that stitching is more underneath, the line is a little closer. So it doesn't look the same all the way around. Now that's nothing to die over. I am going to leave it just the way it is. You could take it out if you wanted to, but that is just a note for you guys to know that when you are pulling your fabric to the back, you definitely want to make sure that everything is pulled to the back evenly. Okay. Do it as best you can, but if it's not you know, perfect. Don't even worry about it. Okay. I have a bunny outline I need to put down and I think I need to do a thread color change to a brown for my bunny. And let me grab some thread. I didn't grab a brown. So let me grab some thread for this guy. Yeah, that'll work. I don't have any others handy, so that'll work. Is that going to be too dark? Oh, no. Is that going to be too dark? What do you guys think? Might be. You think the bunny will cover it anyway. That's true. The bunny might cover it anyway, and you really wouldn't know. The bunny is a... He's got a little bit darker outline on here, so I'm going to leave it as uh, this color. I think it'll be fine. Okay, time to change the thread colors. Now, when I uh, do my threads this way, I like to use this little thread guide right up here on the top of the machine. This thread guide is really for um, bobbins, but I like it to keep my threads from um, doing anything they ought to not. Okay. Something smells hot like it's burning. And I need to make sure I haven't got anything touching anything that is hot around here. It's not. Okay. Hopefully that's alrighty. Good enough for government work. That's right, L Faber. We're good with that, aren't we? That's how we roll around here. Let's see. Stitch the bunny placement line. We are on uh, page 10, number four. I'm concerned. Oh, that worked. Y'all need to watch. Let me, um, I'm smelling something burning, you guys, like plastic. Maybe it's somebody's burning something outside. That freaks me out. Okay. That's my what? Okay. If your presser foot can be lifted, make sure it doesn't get caught up under here. Okay your embroidery foot. So I am going to go into my settings and I'm looking for, and I have my embroidery speed set at 700. My foot height, I want it up. I'm going to raise it just a little bit and tell it okay. That'll make me feel a little bit better, I think. Yeah, I just don't want that getting caught up under there. If you guys don't have, oh, I'm sorry. 
If you guys don't have the ability to raise your presser foot heights, then um, be sure to use a purple thang or something to just kind of slow it down or hold stuff down and make sure that it's not going to be a problem. Okay, so now I need to put, um, I need some tape. Just one little piece, it says, right up here on top. This is a chocolate bunny. Yummy. Okay. Anybody in here raise rabbits? I don't. I have chickens. And now I'm going to tack it down. I could probably put my foot height back to the default, but this has got some thickness to it anyway, so I'm okay. All righty. My thread stand page, my thread stand, Teresa, is on my Amazon shop. And you can always go to powertoolswiththread.com. And that is my blog. And I have got a uh, shop. What do we got here? What's going on? We broke our thread. Okay. Let me show you how to fix that. I had a thread break. Could have been a little thin spot in the thread. You never know. Okay. Let me show you how to fix that. Let me show you what happened. First thing you want to do is to cut the thread so that the bobbin thread cuts. Let me tell you, okay. What? Oh, I pushed this lever. No. Use the presser foot. Oh, lower the presser foot. Cut. Okay. Whenever you have a thread break, which happens, we had some goopies back there on the back. That's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. And this is why you have your needle plus minus button. So let me get my little trims here. I'm just going to grab these, trim this up on the top. Now this is going to be trimmed around the outside stitching. I'm going to leave that stitch... Let me show you. Okay. Where the thread started to shred is right here, but it's got a tiny little line. It's not fuzzy anymore, so I'm going to leave that. And on the back, um, you can trim if you want, just to keep any kind of drama away. It might come up, it might not, whatever. You don't have to completely take it out or take it apart. You just want to get the parts that if the stitch stitches over it, it, you won't be able to see whatever's underneath it. So that looks pretty good. Okay. So right where that little white stitch is, right there, that's where it started to shred and it went this far and then it stopped. Okay, I'm gonna put it back in the machine. And before you put it back in the machine, you want to make a habit to double check your bobbin and make sure the bobbin is threaded properly. Sometimes when you have thread breaks, something will wrap around in there and your bobbin will come unthreaded from the, um, around where it's supposed to go. So always want to pull that around and rethread your bobbin. That makes life really nice. So you know that's not going to be a problem. I just like to do that. It's a habit I have gotten into. My presser foot is might be too high. Yeah, I'll put it back to standard. Okay. And then, as I said before, you never want to pull the thread backwards out of the machine. And I can't see the end of it. It is up inside somewhere. So I'm just going to grab it and follow the thread path around as best I can to get it out of the machine. And because you don't want that inside of your machine. Your, your repair shop will love you. 
but you don't want that inside of your machine, okay? So I'm just going to thread this again. I'm going to go into my settings and my presser foot height. I'm going to go back to de the default and tell it OK. Now, because it got a little farther than when the problem started, you want to go back. And what I'm going to do is you're going to use that needle plus minus button on your machine. And on my machine, I can go forward or backwards one, 10, 100, or 1,000 stitches, or I can go right back to zero. I want to go back a, before the problem started. So normally 20 stitches at a minimum, possibly 30. Okay, so I'm gonna go back 10, 20. I've got farther to go. Let me show you how I can, what I'm doing here. Uh, let me, I'm going to try to get you guys up so you can see better. Hold on. There. Now you can see better. I need to get back here. So I'm going to keep hitting minus 10. And on this machine, there is a W in the foot on the screen right, where is it at? Right there. And that's gonna give me a tiny little crosshair. And that tiny crosshair is gonna show me exactly where the stitch is gonna start. And I don't want it there. I think I wanna go back about five more. Oh, maybe, maybe right there. Okay, that's good. So I'm ready to go. Perfect. Get hold of this, make that go away. And now I want the topper, that piece of topper. And I'm going to use my tape, put it on so that the white thread for the inside of the ear doesn't disappear. And I need to change my thread colors. Yeah, Rhett, I usually go back 30 as well. This one, I think that thread held on a little bit longer <laughs> than it should have. Yeah, that's okay. I normally go back 30. As if I have a thread break and I catch it like right away, um, 20 to 30 for sure. You guys are all experienced embroiderers. You've been around the block. I don't even know why you're watching. <laughs> uh, Tooltron, Junebag. T-O-L-T-O-O-L-T-R-O-N, Tooltron is the name of that site. They've got lots of goodies on there. Not always the same stuff all the time. Let's see. Okay. It looks like I put the, skip the topping. Did I do that? No, I did it right. Place the wash away topping completely over the leather and tape in place. Stitch the inner ear fill. So we are on step six on page 10. Frito. Okay, 
you're here because you always learn something. Yeah. <laughs> you learn what to do when you screw up. <laughs> Makes it worth it. All righty. And I need a thread color change to black for the eyeball. I can do that. Okay, that's all right, Mr. Iron. I don't need you anymore. Twist it twice. Do the dance. So we're just going to do some standard uh, stitching fills now. Another thread color change to the blue for the bow. And when you do this enough times, you will be the, a believer in a multi-needle. Definitely. So tomorrow when we do the multi-needle, you will see how nice it is to have that machine. Whoop. Oh, the nose. I need the pink. Hold on. How nice it is to have the machine do that for you. Hmm. Because you, you always have to um, program in stops, you know, whenever you're going to do something like add fabric or topper or something like that. But in the, um, when it comes time to at near the end where you're finishing up with these decorative stitches, just program it which spool to use when and let it do its thing. So the nose, yep. <laughs> Shelly, <laughs> can you tell those people, hey, I'm in a class, leave me alone. <laughs> Put your phones in. That's the way to politely have people not talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you have a lot of color changes, you go, oh, I want a multi-needle. Okay. Okay. And then what's next? Oh, now is the blue bow. I got ahead of myself one stitch. Okay. Yeah, I know. When I was in the hospital last week, um, my phone was blowing up with text messages. So, and don't get me wrong, I loved every one of them. But between that and then them continually pestering me for blood and, uh, you know, vital signs and IV and blah, blah. It was like, would you people, I can't get any rest. <laughs> okay, time for the, the bow. And my phone. Here we are. There's my son. This is turning out so nice. Yeah, no rest at the hospital. Why didn't I scan and cut the bunny? Tracy, that is a, um, it's supposed to be like a raw edge applique looking thing. And I guess I could have, but I don't trust it. I don't know. I guess I could have, because you can do up to three millimeters in cut, right? So yeah, we've got, I don't know how many more stitches to go through here. We got three flowers. Let's see. We're on the bow fill, and then we have flower one, flower two, flower three, and then center detail. So four more. Four more thread color changes. Hi, Heidi. 
Oh, Sue, that stinks. No, Tina, my thumb has not started bending yet. For those of you who are new or unaware, I had a dog bite on the 29th of February. And I, the only reason I have a Band-Aid on it, I'm supposed to leave it open so it dries, but the only reason I have a Band-Aid on it is because there's five stitches under there and it looks gross. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. You guys just have to trust the process on this. Oh, I know why. So you don't want to scan and cut the bunny because uh, it has a tiny little stitch that is inside of the um, cut edge. And I don't want to miss that. Yeah. Okay. So thread color change to the yellow. Now I'm, let's see. I need to trim. Oh, y'all, I forgot to trim the bunny. Oops. I got to trim the bunny. I forgot. I was talking to you guys and I forgot. I should have done that before I stitch down that bow. Uh-oh, sorry about that. My camera. I've got a short somewhere, y'all. Not a big deal, we can get through it. This is what it's like in my sewing room, you guys. This is just how it goes. So you need to trim the bunny uh, before you do the bow because now I've got to get inside that little loop. Not a big deal. I can do it, but still, it's, it's much handier not to have to. Now, when you are trimming, is it blurry? Sorry. When you are trimming, if you're right-handed, you want to trim clockwise so that the bottom blade is closest to the stitching. If you trim counterclockwise, you won't get as close of a stitch or a trim. You can get nice and close. And when you trim, try to do as long as a, of a cut as possible. Don't, you don't want to do a bunch of that. You'll get jig, you know, real jagged edges. You don't want to do that. You want to get a nice, smooth cut, especially around the curves, as much as possible so that you don't get jagged cuts, a jagged edge. If you're left-handed, Trim counterclockwise. You just want the lower blade as close to the stitching as possible. Yeah, I have people ask, doesn't it bother you when you make mistakes on your show? And I'm like, no, I seem to remember Julia Child making mistakes all the time in the kitchen as a kid. <laughs> she was famous. It was fine. So if you've got good scissors, it's fine. You won't even see it. You, you know when you won't see it? May. Because <laughs> this is April's. And Easter's in March. So it'll be put away by then. Again, you need to do it on a firm, flat surface. So you get a nice, uh, you don't pull on the stabilizer at all or change the registration. You want to keep the curve of the scissor very close to the flat on here. There, that looks good. Hello, Harley. Harley's poking her nose in here through the doggy door. Okay, so I can trim that up a little bit later, and then I'll get this out of here and trim that when we get done. I have to, I'll probably take a, 
Um, I'll, I'll get a little trim out of there and clean that up. So yeah, um, trim your bunny before the blue. <laughs> He's talking to Harley. He says, mama, don't want you in there. <laughs> I'm going to leave that. I'll clean that up in a minute. Okay. What's relief cutting, Heidi? I've heard that and I don't know what the term means. All right, so we need to do Could I use a Keith Ripper? Mm, possibly. All right, time to do the yellow thread. You remove the excess fabric. Okay. I like to have something to hold on to. Okay. So yellow, all right, gotta go. Okay, Francie, thanks for joining us. This is so cute. Let's see, I got pink and I got orange and then white and that'll be it we'll be done and then i'm going to show you how i trim it up using the orange pop rulers those are no it doesn't need the topper on top of the fabric betsy it only needed the topper to stitch on top of the pleather and that's it that's why you remove the topper you know it says I guess it's, it is on there on the picture. They didn't have you remove it. Well, you know what? I did it exactly. Huh? I did do it exactly like they said. I didn't mess it up. They said to do it like that. Huh? Okay. That's just the way it is. All right. Next is the pink. My, you're going to hear my dog come through the flap here in a minute. I can, she's got her head stuck through and panting. <laughs> she's 17. She's got one leg in the front. And she does it all the time. If there was food involved, she'd be right through. No problem. She's just acting like an old lady wanting to be crotchety. Okay. The... Stitching on the flowers does not sink down into the um, the quilting cotton. It's just like embroidering anything else on quilting cotton. I am a mess. I'm doing all right. No, it's fine. Right? Yeah, I did. Mi I messed up that stuff. I am a mess. No, I got a lot on my mind. And then the orange. You gave your 10 year old dog a tonsillectomy? Or is that, is, is Max a dog? <laughs> this is a normal day for you when you're embroidering. It's fine. That's what I love about machine embroidery. There's very little that you cannot recover from on this. Very little. Uh, popping the hoop apart is about the only thing where it really, um, 
is a problem. I'm ready to go. Okay. And then the last one will be white and then we can trim it up. Oh, your 10 year old son. <laughs> I'm like, why would you give a dog a tonsillectomy? <laughs> Popsicles and ice cream. That's what you get for tonsillectomies, right? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. That dog with the three legs has had uh, one amputation on that front leg. That was when she was two. And then it must have been about five or six years ago. She got a new knee. And back then, y'all, she was still running and uh, very, very active up and down the stairs in the motorhome or in the RV. We, ha we got the motorhome a, a little while ago after that. But she was, uh-oh, Frito's going to bark. Somebody's playing with the, uh, the deliveries box out front. Who is it, Frito? Don't bark now, sweetheart. I'm in the middle of this. Almost done. <laughs> She's waiting for a biscuit. She always gets a biscuit when she makes a good alert. Where's my Frito? Hi, babies. Come here. That's a good girl. I'll give you a biscuit when I'm done, okay? Yeah, I'll give you a biscuit when I'm done. You're a sweet girl. <laughs> We've had her almost a year. Hi, Donna. Thanks for joining us. We're doing the flowers. We're almost finished. I thought you were talking about your dog. I did. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. You had your tonsils out at 50? No, thank you. That's miserable. Okay, and this next stitch, this is stitch number, let's see, um, 14. That is a, a, it's a placement guide, and it says, do not stitch that. So I'm not going to stitch that, and we'll be done. And I want to show you, this is pretty good. So I'm going to show you how to trim this. The instructions say, to visually center the egg shape and square the block to four and a half. That's it. So rip off the topping if you left it on there. And then I have got the orange pop rulers, both the rectangular and the square. And they are, I keep them in one of these. These are bags from uh, Creative Notions Quilt Shop. I love these zipper bags. They're clear. I can see what's in them. Okay. And here, let's see. These are my rectangles. Very handy for these kinds of projects, you guys. And this is my four and a half. I'm pretty sure. Yep. That's my four and a half. And these are nice. And you guys, if you ever see these, like, from Timu or something like that, um, that, that's a design ripoff. These are originally from Kimber Bell. They're doing the same color and everything. No shame, no shame at all. So I, I would ask you not to, uh, patronize that site. I just don't like, um, designers that rip off stuff. That's, I, I don't care for that. All right. I'm going to leave all of that tape. It's all going to be covered by the backing and nobody cares. You can peel it off if you want, but there's no need. Okay. And if you do decide to take off anything on the back, do not trim your orange fabric because you don't want it to come loose. So don't trim the orange fabric at all. Just leave it the way it is. So I'm going to center this up just visually. Just take a look at it here and make sure it looks right. Looks good. And these have little um, gaps. See the, that's where the, see that V? That is where your, um, 
that's where your rotary cutter wheel will go. And how you use these, so if you're left handed, if you're right handed, you're going to trim on the left side first. Just let's see. That looks pretty good. So just press it in and push. And if you use a rotary pet, a rotary mat, that's even better. But I'm just going to turn the mat here. If, uh, if you are a subscriber to Creative Notions Quilt Shop, they sent you a four and a half inch centering ruler, which is very handy. All right. Ta-da. Perfect. This looks great. I will trim out that little bit right there and it'll look great, but there we are. So there is Bunny 2. Not toward my hand. Tina, there's a piece of plastic there that's going to keep it from coming at me. I promise. Yeah, there's a piece of plastic there. Yeah, it's not like it was, uh, not like a regular ruler. It had a, it had a boundary. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it had a boundary. So anyway, awesome sauce. I made use of scraps. I love that. Made use of these handy dandy rulers. This, ouch. This is a 45 millimeter. Okay, my Ulfa. These are my favorite. And y'all, this turned out just adorable. Look at that. Okay. So now tomorrow noon, we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to do another bunny in the hoop. And we're going to do it on the multi-needle. So tune in for that. That'll be fun. Even if you don't have one, it's always fun to watch it in action. Might, you know, and you learn technique and what to do and what not to do. Because basically, the process is the same. How do I back that? Betsy wants to know. I will, the, the other one, I, I don't think I put... I, the other ones had batting in them because I had done background quilting. This one I'm not doing in the background quilting. And um, I'm just going to leave it like it is. It's super cute because there's not that much fabric, really, that needs background quilting anyway. This is going to finish at 4 by 4 right? So it doesn't need it. It's fine. Um, let me see here. Yeah. So... Uh, a lot of le lessons learned today, and I probably, hopefully, won't make them tomorrow, right? <laughs> you never know, though. Never say never with me. <laughs> All right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you. Thank you. El Faber is going to make the coffee. That's good. I will see you tomorrow morning in our situation room, 7 a.m. Central, uh, or I'll see you tomorrow at noon. And we'll do this on the multi-needle. Then you'll have the weekend and Monday to finish up your blocks. And Tuesday, we will put them all together. Okay? All right. It's a date. I'll talk to you later. You guys go sew something. Bye.